Hello, America. Dave Hodges here. I'm the host of The Common Sense Show. We are the show that is freeing America one enslaved mind at a time. Thank you so much for joining us. We're brought to you by My Digital Money. Listen, if you keep your money in the bank right now, you're taking a huge risk and you need to keep some money in the bank, no doubt, because you got to exist in this society. But if you trust your bank to be the guardian of your assets, you don't know the Dodd-Frank Law 2010 says they can take it. UCC Code Section 8 says in a crisis they can take it. They can take it. Once you put your money in the bank, it's theirs. The retirement attached, same thing. My Digital Money uses crypto, Bitcoin. It's exploding in value. That's been well publicized. It's going to continue to explode in value. And particularly the mining of it is getting more limited. Supply and demand will increase this exponentially. This is the time. Protect your assets. You can even convert your 401k and your IRA to crypto, an appreciating asset, as opposed to the dollar, a depreciating asset. No question in mind. This is the best thing to do. Go to MyDigitalMoney.com. MyDigitalMoney.com. Well, we're going to be a little provocative here because I've teased Mars quite a bit. So I wanted to do some research because I do believe the face on Mars and the surrounding so-called structures, lights and shadows are real structures. I do not think those are lights and shadows. I think that defies common sense. So I wanted to go see what the expert said, and I asked a question in my research. And let me cover here for you exactly who I researched here. My sources were NASA, JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory of NASA, the New York Post, NASA Science, and Live Science. And lo and behold, I was a little surprised, although it didn't take me to the level that I think this deserves. My view, and I'll get the bias out of the way in the beginning, there is a connection between Mars and Earth. Could be ancient, one settled the other, the other settled one, I don't know. But it is very interesting that Cydonia on Mars has all these things in common with the Giza Plateau Pyramids and that uh, two space probes have been knocked out of existence by something coming out of Phobos, the moon, one of the two moons that rotates around Mars, and many people think it's hollow, and they think that uh, this is a planetary defense system. That, And then you've got the Russian, excuse me, the Harvard physicist talks about nuclear war. We're going to hit that a little later uh, in the later segment, but let's get down to it because... Although the science that I uncovered with the sources I just cited did not take me quite to the level that I'm at. And remember, I'm a believer in the great deception, but it didn't take me to that level. But it took me farther than I thought it would. Here we go. Is it possible that underground life could exist on Mars? I'm pretty sure it's not on the surface. I'll grant NASA that. And the answer that I got from the sources I just cited, yes, it's possible that life could exist underground on Mars, even if the surface is too harsh today. So let's give a little historical lesson here. Mars has been a fascination for the world for a long time. Started with Galileo, and he first observed Mars with a telescope, almost got him killed, because uh, the Catholic Church didn't like <laughs> science that tended to challenge their interpretation of the Bible. Notice I didn't say the Bible, I said their interpretation. Then in 1877, Giovanni Schiaparelli, he had uh, thought he saw canals and channels, and that's all true. And then in 1910, the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, uh, astronomer Lowell thought he saw canals too. So he said, oh, they're, they're irrigating up there. They're raising Martian corn or something. And that's was his conclusion, end up not being correct. But it still furthered the fascination we had. Of course, we had the War of the Worlds, H.G. Wells. Um, pretty interesting, right? I mean, there were even people that committed suicide over that radio program that pretended that there was a real invasion. 1965, in the modern era, Mariner 4 sends back the first close-up photos of Mars and showed a crater, moon-like surface. That's going to come up a little bit later with that Harvard physicist. 1971, Mariner 9 became the first spacecraft to orbit another planet, and it mapped the volcanoes, canyons, and dry riverbed, and things like that. In 1976, NASA's Viking 1 and 2 uh, actually land 
and they take high resolution images, perform biology experiments, no clear evidence of life on the surface of the planet. 1990s, searching for water. Where you find water, you have HDO, you have the building blocks, the elements for life. It was a good place, good way to look. And the Mars Pathfinder in 1997 and its rover Sojourner explore rocks and soil, proving Mars once had a warmer and wetter climate. I'm disappointed, as I've said before, because they didn't send that probe to Cydonia region of Mars. Why? That was the most curious of all the evidence we've had that there could have been life on Mars or something was on Mars of intelligent design, created something intelligent. We could have debunked this right away with lights and shadows, and here's the proof. Why didn't NASA go there? Why haven't they gone back? This has been 28 years, but to me, that's very, very suspicious. In the 2000s, water evidence is found. Uh-oh, now you're talking life. Not necessarily like you and me, but life. 2004, Spirit and Opportunity Rovers find mineral evidence that liquid water once flowed on Mars. 2008, and this is huge, the Phoenix Lander detects subsurface ice at the North Pole. Well, what's ice? Hardened HDO, right? Okay, 2010, signs of habitability. In 2012, Curiosity rover lands at the Gale Crater and discovers ancient lake sediments, organic molecules, and methane spikes in the atmosphere. We're talking more building blocks of life here. In 2015, NASA confirmed seasonal flows of salty liquid water, salty oceans. Salty liquid water on Mars surface later thought to be mostly dust flows, but not entirely. See, NASA always wants to limit when you get into the realm of is it life, is it not life? They always want to limit this. And so they had to put the qualifier on, but it didn't take away the finding. And then, of course, in the 2020s, they were searching for biosignatures. 2021, the, Preser the Perseverance rover lands in Jezero Crater, a site of an ancient river delta and signs and searching for signs of microbial life. Here we go. This is where it gets serious. In 2021, Ingenuity Helicopter performs the first powered flight on another planet. Amazing. Amazing. Ongoing. Perseverance is collecting rock samples for a future mission to bring back to Earth for a detailed analysis. So what's coming up? What's next? Well, with NASA, don't plan on a straight answer. NASA, never a straight answer. But let's look ahead and see what they're going to do. They need to go to Cydonia, and I won't back off of that until they do. In, 2020, uh, see, in 2020s to 2030s, NASA and the European Space Agency plans a Mars sample return mission to retrieve Perseverance samples. Now, that's important. But also, it's showing you could extract astro astronauts from the face of Mars like we have done on the face of the moon. That's a prelude to a manned mission. And in the 2030s and 40s, possible human missions to Mars. Now, let's get into some facts related to the life aspect. Mars surface has extreme cold, low air pressure, and high radiation from the sun. It's all bad for life. That's bad news. But what about underground? Underground layers are shielded from the radiation and may have more stable temperatures. And there is evidence of subsurface water. This is big. Radar data from the European Space Agency Mars Express spacecraft suggests there may be liquid water beneath the layers of ice at the South Pole. I, I think that's really a disqualifier that's unnecessary. If you have ice, you have water. End of discussion. Why do they have to qualify it? Are they giving the NASA version of never a straight answer? I think they are. Salty brines could keep water from freezing even in the Mars cold climate. Ooh, boy. There's a stabilization factor there that you would need for life. Now, Earth's underground life is a clue for Mars. We can look at our own planet and surmise some things that we can now take for granted on Mars. 
On Earth, microbes live deep underground in rock pores, caves, and even kilometers beneath the surface without the sunlight surviving on chemical energy. If Mars ever had life, it could have retreated underground as the surface became drier and colder. This is from the sources I cited earlier. Upcoming searches. NASA's Perseverance rover is studying rock layers in ancient river delta. Oh, that's wonderful. What about Cydonia? Okay, back to the point here. The European Space Agency's ExoMars rover, delayed but planned, will drill up to two meters deep looking for biosignatures in protected subsurface layers. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. Here's the bottom line. Here's the conclusion. If life exists on Mars today, underground is one of the most likely places, safe from radiation with possible pockets of liquid water. Now the thinking, and I agree with this, is that conventionally we would tend to think this would be microbial life, but I don't think that is necessarily an exclusive conclusion. You have to go and find out. Anyway, this is what science says, and I'm gonna say this again, go to Cydonia. And we need to challenge NASA. In fact, actually, I'd be in favor of pulling funding until the next mission does go to Cydonia. Because there's just too much there. We have shown you here on this channel. There's something there that needs to be investigated thoroughly. And honestly, I don't trust NASA to do a thorough, honest investigation. Because I'll close with this. The Brookings Institute, yeah, you can probably repeat what I've told you. If we go out there and find that we've been there before, we go out there and find something unusual, we should cover it up because civilization on Earth would fall apart, religions would go away, and the planet would be in a terrible chaos. Brookings Institute, guiding document for NASA. It's time for a change. It's time for real research on this. And I think we ought to move up our timetable for a manned mission. Safely, of course, but we need to move it up. Anyway, I'm Dave Hodges. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, you think you could see they don't go as far as I do, Cydonia. But I think that we're moving in the correct direction, where at least we're getting some somewhat honest scientific analysis that raises the question that validates what I've been saying all these years. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you back here again next time.